looking at the Bitcoin chart now today, we find ourselves in an inverted arc. So this is the opposite of a, a cup pattern. It's a, a sort of a dome shaped pattern. And we have been rising, as Patrick just, just described, in a bit of a bounce off that 20,000. In this video, Patrick Kareem and Kevin Wadsworth, technical analysts of North Star and Bad Charts, discuss the next price targets for Bitcoin and gold. The predictions are clear for them. The markets are hitting a bottom. We don't have to worry about fundamentals, about whoever's spinning a positive spin, like is Bitcoin the next uh, world currency? Like it totally doesn't matter. Uh, we saw that it was important. Uh, it broke down from a rising trend line, which is the first means momentum break. So when you break down from a rising trend line, momentum breaks, but often it tricks people because after that, there's like a neko move back up. And then people, ah, we're in the clear, but it refuses to do new high. And then it tumbles down, breaks below horizontal support. And uh, like Kevin identified on the chart, once you're below that, it's, you have to favor more move down until the chart proves to you otherwise that it can close back above those levels. And until it does that, the bias has to be uh, downwards. That was just in TA. So we knew, we knew as fast as it went up, not a lot of buyers. So there was a vacuum when it broke out above uh, 18 or $19,000. It went up fast. It created base on top around mm -hmm. 40, 60,000, 30,000. And once you break down below that, there's not that many buyers that, that bought on the way up. So it just vacuums all the way down back to the previous base. And that's what we call a reverse symmetry move. So that's one of our techniques that we could use in TA that we know, okay, there's vacuum. It's going to go all the way down. And then when there's that huge base where people previously believed there was a low watermark for Bitcoin, it hits it again. And then after that, it starts bouncing around that area until mm -hmm. the market decides if it wants to try to go down below those levels or try to bounce uh, uh, back up. Yeah, so the uh, the Bitcoin simple summary chart that I put out uh, back on May 9th or around May the 9th, uh, as you say, took us down to around about 20,000. I had uh, a series of staged targets, 30,000, 20,000, and then an ultimate target that um, took us to somewhere around 10 or 12,000, David. Um, looking at the Bitcoin chart now today, we find ourselves in an inverted arc. So this is the opposite of a, a cup pattern. It's a, a sort of a dome shaped pattern. And we have been rising, as Patrick just, just described, in a bit of a bounce off that 20,000 area. And uh, it's taken us up and formed a bearish rising wedge hitting resistance. Uh, there are a number of technical analysis techniques and features of this chart, which make it more probable that this is gonna break to the downside and head down towards that 10 to 12,000 target. I would assess the odds at around about 70 to 80 percent likely that we break down to see these lower lows and around about 20 to 30 <clears> percent, <throat> excuse me, around about 20 to 30 percent probability of moving to the upside. So we can't rule out that upside uh, move, but uh, knowing where the support and resistance levels are is going to give us that uh, that really early heads up. So those are all marked on the on the chart for, for people to see. So we're heading uh, in the direction of the 30 week or 200 day moving average. Those are both very similar in, in value, of course. And that's uh, somewhere just above $30,000, $32,000, $33,000, that kind of area. By the time we move up to meet it, I guess we could be somewhere around twenty-nine dollars or $30,000. So that is the upside target, and that's the highest I would expect it to, to get. Uh, we may mm. well start to run out momentum before then and, and begin to roll over. I noticed quite a few of the cryptocurrencies already doing that and seem to have put in their, their highs for this, um, what, I, what I'm seeing is a bear market rally. So we're either at or very close to those, um, those those peaks at the moment. Well, there's two things you got to remember about Bitcoin. It started, I remember, I think we talked about in our previous interview, uh, it, it started in 2011, that's the charts. So it started at the inception of the NASDAQ the tech bubble, right, market. And right now it's tracking that. And you got to remember right now, if we go in an inflation period where they're just devaluing fiat and we're just adding zeros, right? Because everything, let's say in the 1970s, a barrel of oil was $3, and then after that it was 20 and then 90 and then whatever it goes up. You have to start measuring stuff in adjusted for gold, adjusted for silver, adjusted for something other than fiat, right? Because mm -hmm. nominally, let's say we're going to hyperinflation, Bitcoin targets, of course, if that, they, they could nominally stay afloat, even go higher. But then after that, if gold goes up higher or faster than yes. Bitcoin, do you really want to hold like Bitcoin or any assets, you know, that are just mm -hmm. adding zeros to it? Okay. So... Like, you know, we, we saw the SPX broke down versus the producer price index or the Dow Jones Industrial Average break down versus the producer price index. And every time that's happened previously in the past, 
There's a whole bunch of other events that came from that. Then after that, gold broke out versus SPX. And after that, if gold breaks out versus SPX, silver tracks that racial chart to practically perfection, uh, com- uh, miners, uh, all that type of stuff starts going up. Once the capital flows, they start shifting away. So Bitcoin, the way we see the chart right now, like Kevin explained it, it's looking a, a lot like uh, the NASDAQ chart starting to, to roll right. over or NASDAQ uh, priced in gold. So uh, it's nominally, it's very hard to see higher higher targets for, for Bitcoin. Very hard. In, in broad terms, yeah. I mean, until proven otherwise, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin are uh, a play on tech stocks. And that's, you know, maybe partly due to the fact that cryptocurrencies haven't been around for a huge amount of time. So we just don't know how they're going to behave if and when the stock market is going to a much more prolonged and serious decline rather than yes. just the usual uh, short corrective phase that we've seen over recent years. So if we have a repeat of the sort of thing that happened in the 1970s and we see um, downward to sideways trending stock markets for a number of years, we just don't know how cryptocurrencies are, g- are going to behave in that kind of environment. So this is where the technical analysis comes into its own because you don't need to worry about what the narratives are, what the fund- what the fundamental stories are, all the arguments that are going on on, on Twitter and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. The technical analysis will tell you, it'll tell you straight away if Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are doing what they not- normally do and what they usually do. And, and, and by the way, that would mean them finding a, a low point sometime uh, during the final quarter of this year or the first quarter of next year. That would be very normal. And then for cryptocurrencies to go onto a new leg, new bull run, to new all-time highs that would be the normal if that starts to look as though it's not happening and if nasdaq continues to show weakness and by the way the stock markets are also in a bearish rising wedge at the moment um then it means um that as far as you know as far as um evidence is concerned the, the cryptos are just doing exactly what the nasdaq and the stock markets are doing mm-hmm. and they're not capable of decoupling from uh from, from the market from the from the markets but gold and silver of course, um, would be expected and commodities as well. Um, and for a whole host of other reasons, by the way, ratio charts and a whole whole host of other evidential analysis that we're doing, um, showing this capital shift, this flow of capital and, and this, this share of capital that commodities and precious metals are getting, uh, the share of the money supply is gradually shifting away from stock markets uh, and away from general equities and towards commodities of various descriptions at the moment, energy, commodities, uh, precious metals, base metals, they're all taking their turn in the spotlight and handing the baton from one to the other. But that's where the the, the, the growth is at the moment, if you want to put it that way, in the share of, of money supply, um, whereas the stock market is having it kind of seep, seeping away at the moment. So um, right at the critical moment right now, as we're pushing up against resistance levels, both in crypto and in the stock markets. So it will be sometime in the next two, three, four weeks where it'll be a much more definitive answer as to whether we are breaking down or breaking to the upside. So the TA gives us gives the head start there. And by the way, you know, as Patrick said, very, very important not to just measure things nominally. When you've got inflation at nine or ten percent here in the UK, heading towards 13 percent, we're told, don't just measure the nominal value of stuff. Fiat is you can't just measure stuff in fiat. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. You need to measure stuff with reference to inflation or with reference to to gold. Otherwise, okay. you're just you're just referencing a paper currency that is losing value at five, ten, fifteen percent, and that just doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd have to to put up uh, the chart and uh, see how much uh, up room it has. But I would instead of taking how much Bitcoin would go up within mm-hmm. its chart percentage and trying to apply that to Nasdaq. I would actually look at the Nasdaq chart and see where its levels are, see. where its resistance level are, because now we've seen Bitcoin, and that's a lot of it, its attraction. It's like a leverage play on tech stocks, right? Nasdaq goes up ten percent, Bitcoin goes up hundreds of percent, and on the way down, it's probably going to be the same thing, right? Or or back on the way up. So instead of just trying to see how much if Bitcoin goes up, and then after that, there's another another part of technical analysis that will be divergence. So Bitcoin, it, it could you could flip the squid. So Bitcoin might go up a certain percentage up when the NASDAQ refuse to uh, or refuse to go that much higher. Then after that, you could start creating some divergence between uh, using those two instruments to show under underlying weakness in the um, in the whole like tech sector. I if you're going to push me on that, I would say I suspect not uh, for the, for the reasons that we've given and for the the the. the reason that um, we are now at significant uh, resistance levels, both in 
sort of NASDAQ and the S&P, we have carved out this bearish rising pattern in the stock market. So my feeling at the moment is that we are uh, at quite a dangerous point as far as the stock markets are concerned and crypto by extension. So I, I wouldn't be uh, looking to take positions in the stock market at this point um, and expecting um, limited upside uh, moves and limited and also unreliable upside moves. We've seen some pretty strong moves in some of the cryptocurrencies, but as I say, everything in the charts for me uh, is suggesting that this is nearing its end rather than the start of uh, a new uh, strong move to the upside. But as always, you know, the technical charts will um, inform us when we cross those thresholds uh, as, as to whether we need to change that analysis. But at the moment, um, no, I, I, I feel that we're close to closer to the end of this stock market move than the beginning. OK. All right. Um, Patrick, do you have anything to add? Well, just like Kevin said, like there's like the, it's a weight of evidence. So let's say the the stock market SPX broke down versus producer price index. It broke down versus oil. Uh, oil, like I'm expecting SPX to lose like 90% of its value when priced in oil going like in the next 10, 20 years. It's going to be huge, you know, even if uh, nominally it goes down 40% or whatever it is. Expressed in oil, oil is going to go up so much higher than the real value of the SPX will actually lose like practically 90% of its value. And, so, and, and, this, and, this, and this is what's um, showing in a lot of the charts, actually, David. You know, no matter what SPX does, the ratio charts are suggesting that a whole range of other um, investment vehicles are going to outperform SPX by that kind of... <laughs> I've just seen the cat jumping onto Pat's desk there. Um, going to outperform uh, SPX. So if you look at things like, for example... Don't, uh, energy... don't, push the, don't push the cat away. I mean, invite him back. Maybe he's got some uh, right. input to give. <laughs> he might have something to say, might he, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. I cut you off, Kevin. Please continue. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, particularly when we look at things like uh, energy plays and uranium. Uh, I have to mention uranium. I keep mentioning uranium. Uh, looking at the ratio chart of uranium to the SPX. Um, there's a whole range of other investment vehicles that look as though they're poised to hugely outperform uh, the, stock, the stock market. So um, the next few years, I suspect, are going to be incredibly, um, uh, how can I put it, an incredible opportunity for investors who are able to spot these tidal shifts.